Manly multi-tools. That's what we're going to talk about today. From tactical to practical. Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about what it means to be a man. The right way, with God at the center. Making godly men strong and strong men godly. If you're a return listener, I hope you'll scroll down and hit some stars or leave a review. With that, I'll put in the bio, and then, God willing, we'll have a good, solid episode. First and foremost, I am a servant of God, preacher, a fisher of men. God is number one in my life, and everything that I do in this podcast is no different, and I don't apologize for that. A little bit about me in the background. I grew up, I guess what you would consider a heathen. Didn't grow up a Christian. But I grew up in the southeastern United States, what most would consider very poor. Hunting and fishing and shooting. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. After my combat tours in Iraq, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in law enforcement for several years in LAPD. I worked patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. Where by God's grace, he got me through some nasty places in this world of war zones. And some of the nastiest streets in the country. Not because I am better, because God chose to have mercy on me and had a purpose for me. And I'm thankful for that. After my time in law enforcement, I was a private contractor for federal government, for a three-letter government agency I won't specify, doing private contracting work. I'm very much involved in guns and gunfighting. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. I should say my primary MOS is in both branches of the military or infantry as of one sort or another. Specialized infantry in the Marine Corps and an MOS that no longer exists. I started competition shooting even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I won my first gold medal even before I joined the Marine Corps at 17. I've been blessed by God with the talents he's given me to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I've won most of my competitions in rifle and pistol, but I've also competed in archery and shotgun and even muzzleloader, uh, knife throwing, hatchet throwing. I've competed in all that. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide. Like I said, I grew up hunting and, and fishing and shooting. I've done it to put meat on the table because I like to put food on the table with the talents God's given me. I don't apologize for that. I've done it as a professional hunter and guide. I've slain all manner of beast and guided for all manner of beast. Bear and wolf and elk and deer, mule deer, white-tailed deer. I've slain ram. And fallow deer and countless animals. And I don't apologize for that either. FBI certified firearms instructor, NRA, and a bunch of other three-letter government agency certifications. Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Psalm 144. I've been blessed to be the commander of a tactical team, an SRT special response team in a large metropolitan area where our primary job was to stop active shooters. But again, first and foremost, I'm a servant of God, called by God to share the good news, preacher, a fisher of men. I'm your host, Michael Melito. I threw in an older retro version of the bio. Don't know why, just thought it might be good to change it up. Hopefully you enjoyed it if you've only heard the new one. Or have heard the new one a lot lately. Anyhow, with that, let's talk about the day's topic. Multi-tools. Now, I kind of carry a multi-tool every day EDC. It's probably the most minimalistic multi-tool you could think of. But I have several points in my life carried a legit what most would consider a more full-size multi-tool. One was when I was an assaultman in the Marine Corps. Part of being an assaultman in MOS that no longer exists, we were specialized infantry. And we tackled things that were, let's just say, a little bit bigger than your average infantry man was designed to deal with. did that in a couple of ways. Javelin missiles, 
the small shoulder fire multi-purpose assault weapon, and with demolitions. We did a lot with demolitions. C4, TNT, Dynamite, Penton, RDX. Trained in all those things, courtesy of the U.S. government. Might be called upon to breach an obstacle or take out a bridge, or a light armored vehicle, or a tank, or whatever the case might be. As part of that job, dealing with those explosives, crimping blasting caps, punching C4, those kind of things were issued a multi-tool. And that might be the first time in my life that I carried a multi-tool on me. I guess you could call that EDC during a war, if that's quite the EDC loadout. But I saw the utility in it, and I really liked that multi-tool, and... I didn't keep it because it wasn't mine. That was a great version. Think of as your more classic multi-tool. It was a Gerber. I don't know the model, but it's got a C4 punch on it and a blasting cap crimper on it. I don't know how many models they make like that, but it was a good full-size multi-tool, and it got used a lot. And not just for dealing with explosives, for day-to-day -day stuff. At least day-to-day -day as far as Marine Corps infantrymen is concerned. When I was a ranch manager that's part of my being a professional big game hunter and guy that i mentioned i also managed a very large ranch part of that like a modern day desperado was out riding fences that was a big part of the job it was an exotic game ranch high fenced operation mending fences and trees fall on fences and whatever happens coyotes dig under them mending fences was a, a big part of that and lots of other things that go along with that trapping a multi-tool was really key to that Again, I think I used a full-size Gerber multi-tool for that. I was doing fence work yesterday, just coincidentally putting up some fence, and out comes the multi-tool. I don't carry a full-size multi-tool day-to-day, but they come in really handy, and I have at several points in my life, depending on what I was doing, carried a multi-tool. If you're doing that kind of work, and that's a broad spectrum from dealing with explosives to putting up fences or trapping, all manner of things. Now today, day-to-day, I carry what many may consider the smallest version of a multi-tool. If you would even consider it a multi-tool, I would because it's got multiple tools on it. So by me, it makes a definition of a multi-tool. The Victorinox Classic. It's got a very tiny knife. It has a very small file and flathead slash Phillips head screwdriver on it. It has a very small pair of scissors and it has a toothpick which I don't think I ever really use as a toothpick, but it's good for other stuff, and a small pair of tweezers. That gets attached to my mini Sharpie, which is also part of my EDC. Comes in handy a lot, all those things put together. If you're looking for a good place to start, like you don't carry anything, you don't even carry a knife, and you just want to be a little bit more prepared, I would not consider it a defensive tool or anything like that, but if you want to get into the world of EDC and preparedness, or you want somebody else to, let's say you're already in this world, and you just want anybody a good gift victorinox classic they're tiny you can literally put them in your pocket and forget they're there that's kind of why it's part of my edc and when i need it it's there all right so now i'm going to transition into what i use most or have used most in the past excluding very specialized things like you probably don't need a c4 punch and a blasting cap crimper right and if you do you're gonna know how to do that but day to day whether it being working on a ranch or emergency fixes on a vehicle or i wish gunman wasn't kind of seen as a bad term but somebody that lives his life serving god and carrying a sword a modern day sword a firearm and just day-to-day -day tasks what i use the most what i use the most now part of my other edc is a fighting handgun and a knife I carry a good size fixed blade knife as part of my EDC. If I can't do that for legal reasons or whatever, I'll carry a decent folding knife that I would consider adequate for a backup defensive tool. That being said, if I didn't carry a, another knife, the knife would probably be the thing used the most, but I do carry another knife. Even so, I'll often use the knife on that little Victorinox quite a bit as like my sacrificial blade. If I'm cutting up something really nasty or something that's going to dull the blade, that Victorinox steel is really easy to sharpen. It's not the strongest steel in the world, I'm sure, but it's super easy to sharpen. If I'm cutting up a bunch of nasty tape or scraping something or doing any number of things that can really dull a knife, I'll use that because it's a small blade. It's not expensive. 
easy to sharpen, and I keep the blade on what I would consider a backup fighting tool sharp on my EDC knife. Now, if I need my a bigger, sturdier blade for something, yeah, I'll certainly use my EDC knife for that. But if it's just cutting open tape or a box or something like that, just use the little tiny one on the Victorinox. And there you go. Now, there's kind of two schools of multi-tool. What I would consider, there's probably more and other weird things, but the two main ones are the hinged, based around usually a pair of pliers or something like it, with tools on both sides. Or there's your classic Swiss Army knife type, where it's a just oval-shaped base where you attach knives and screwdrivers and all kinds of other things to that. So those are your two main types. I'm going to say that for hardcore utility, I like the hinged ones based on a pair of pliers, usually based on a needle nose pair of pliers. And those are probably your more robust, for sure, utilitarian multi-tool. Well, let's talk about what I use on the multi-tool the most besides the knife. The next is going to be a screwdriver. That little Victorinox I carry in my pocket or other multi-tools, a lot of times I'll need a screwdriver. The other day I was sitting there enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning with my wife and I saw that some of the hardware in a door was loose. So I pulled out the little Victorinox from my pocket and I tightened it up. And stuff like that happens all the time where you just need a screwdriver, either flat or Phillips head. And that's not the best screwdriver. If I'm going to legitimately be turning a bunch of screws, I want a legit screwdriver. I guess that's a good place to take an aside here. Almost nothing on the multi-tool is better than having a specific tool, right? If I want to do a bunch of things that I would need a pair of pliers or wire cutters for, then I'm going to want a legit wire cutter. But if I just want something for a bunch of different tasks that may pop up and I don't have to drive all the way back to my tools or go all the way back to my tools or carry all the tools, the multi-tool is a good compromise. It saves weight and space. And it gives you a lot of options that you wouldn't otherwise have. But it's not better than having a dedicated tool. If I'm turning a bunch of screws, I want that exact fit for that exact screw. That's the best tool for the job. But it works. So the screwdrivers, I think it's important for them to be on your multi-tool. And then the next thing I probably use the most are the pliers. Pliers, you'd be surprised if you start carrying a multi-tool how often you might utilize the pliers on it. Pliers are pretty important, a pair of robust pliers. Now most of them have needle nose. I don't know that that's the best, but it is the most common and it'll work for most things. Usually the pair of pliers will have, I shouldn't say usually, most of the ones I'm familiar with will have a pair of wire cutters on there and they will also have wire strippers on there for stripping of wires, doing electrical work, things like that. Both of those come in pretty handy when you need them. Again, if I'm stripping a bunch of wires, doing a bunch of electrical work, yeah, by all means, I want a good wire stripper. There's very specific tools for that to do a much better job. You know, if I was a communications engineer, I for sure would want a better tool if I was doing lines and lines of communication wiring or stuff like that. But if I'm only doing one or two things, stripping a pair of wires, then yeah, they work, they'll work just fine if you know how to strip wires and don't get too crazy and cut them. After that, something I find quite handy and I use quite a lot is a file. A file for lots of things. I like files. I like a good metal file. So much so that my current multi-tool that I carry in my baby bug out bag doesn't have one, so I carry a separate good metal file in my baby bug out bag, especially if you are a man that carries a gun and does a lot of shooting and training and things like that. A little small metal file can come in handy. In fact, unplanned, but I just used one yesterday evening. I was doing my daily dry fire and doing some mag change work. My EDC handgun right now is a SIG 226 Legion. Doesn't have a mag well. It predates that whole mag well being in Vogue era. And I noticed that the mags, the rim of the round when I was doing mag changes, would get caught up in a sharp lip on the back of that magazine well so I took a file and I rounded it out there's all manner of things smoothing out rough edges files are good for all kinds of things so a file I'd say is a pretty important tool next to the file something else I find really important is a wood saw a good cutting saw now I should mention that old one thing I really miss about that old Gerber assaultman multi-tool and I don't know the exact model of it but it had a 
metal saw on there as well. And I really like, I would love to have both. I would love to have a good metal saw and a good wood saw if I could get it. Tweezers also I do use quite a bit, especially if you live in a desert area southwest, something like that. You go hiking, your dog goes hiking, or you just do a lot of manual labor and you get splinters. Tweezers can come in really handy. So tweezers are one of those tools. They don't take up a lot of space. They're pretty utilitarian. I like that. One thing I see on a ton of multi-tools, even on my little Victorinox, which I don't really like, the little small scissors. And I'm not saying they don't work. I just don't really use them very often. I would rather have that whole side be a more legit blade if I had to pick. Or I'd have it be a metal file or a wood saw or almost anything more than a little pair of scissors. Now some people may use the little scissors all the time. I can't say that I've never used them, but I can say that they're probably the least used thing on my multi-tools, and I can think of a lot of other things I'd rather have than a little tiny pair of scissors. Now I know that there are other things that a corkscrew can do, but come on, stop, really. A lot of multi-tools, these Swiss Army knives and things have a corkscrew. Even a lot of wine nowadays, and I'm not a big wine drinker, I'll take a sip for communion or whatever it is. But even a lot of wine today doesn't require a legit corkscrew. And are you really, you know, out in the backwoods and need a corkscrew? I would like to see those kind of go the way of the dodo bird and get something more utilitarian and more practical. I should say I also do have a multi-tool that lives in my range bag that is more geared towards gun stuff. You can find those with things like a choke tube wrench, even a 1911 bushing wrench. Make one specifically for ARs. And I, that one I have, it lives in my range bag, which is probably a good place for it. If I was back being a professional firearms instructor, you know, teaching on the line, that can come in really handy. Now let's go to what is my go-to in my baby bug out bag. What I consider like line two gear, not EDC, but maybe EDC plus. If you're not familiar with the, let's call it survival sling bag concept or that, there's a bunch of episodes on the bailout bag, baby bug out bag, whatever you want to call that here. One of the very few videos also I did on YouTube that I don't really have a desire to be YouTube famous, but there's a video on there if you want to check it out where I thought it was easier to visualize and take stuff out. The one that I have may surprise you because it's not marketed towards the alpha male. Marketed for kids. But I really like it. It's the Leatherman Leap. Now, one of the reasons I like it is it's a bright color. It comes in bright colors. Mine's kind of that, I don't know, zombie green if you lived through that whole era of everything was zombie green for a while. And as you might imagine from the bio, I've done quite a bit of tactical stuff. But that's a fallacy that everything's got to be tactical or black or multicam. If it's a multi-tool, I don't want it in multicam because I'm likely to set it down and get up and do something else. And I want it highly visible so that if I drop it or if I forget it, I can go back and find it. Even my other full-size multi-tool, I spray painted a bright green for that very reason. It doesn't have to be green. It could be blue. It could be orange. It could be red. You could spray paint it. But a bright color, I think, on a multi-tool makes a lot of sense. You know, you're probably not some tactical scenario firing one-handed with your handgun and then using a multi-tool to tighten the screw with the other hand, right? Like, everything doesn't have to be tactical. Everything doesn't have to be multi-cam and black and everything like that. I like that the Leatherman Leap is bright color. I also like that it has locking blades. The blade on it, it's got a pretty good stout knife, and it locks. I really like that. If you've ever had a folding knife that didn't lock and had it fold back on your fingers and you needed to get stitches, because I've been there and done that, you'll see why you might think that's important. Having a good locking blade, especially on a good, more full-size utilitarian tool. It's a good locking blade. It's a pretty robust blade for a kid's multi-tool. More robust than it is on a lot of multi-tools. It's a good fine blade. One of the reasons I like the Leatherman Leap. Is it the perfect layout? Does it have everything I want and nothing I don't know? Again, it's got the scissors on there, but it doesn't have, you know, 50 different tools. It has a few select tools that I would use. It has a decent saw. It has a decent knife. It has a really good robust pair of pliers, wire cutters, screwdriver, tweezers, and again, those big blades, the saw and the knife, they lock. And I like that. 
Now it's not the only one, there's a lot of other locking ones, and again, it's bright colored, and it's minimalistic. It's not the biggest, beefiest, most tactical thing, but it's also not huge and doesn't weigh a lot. It's pretty small, pretty handy. I would still consider it a full-size multi-tool. Now, I mentioned the two types. The other type, the giant Swiss Army knife, and I mean giant. I have one that I don't know how many tools it has on it. I'm counting 19, and I'm probably missing some. But it's got all, who knows how many different sizes of flathead screwdriver, maybe four. It's got that, you know, gotta have it in a tactical operator scenario corkscrew. It's got a pair of pliers, if you want to call them that. I would say they're somewhere between pliers and tweezers. I don't think you're going to be tightening many beefy bolts with it like you would with the Leatherman. It's got a pretty big pair of scissors. In fact, I think the scissors are bigger than the pliers. It's got a magnifying glass. It even has a bread knife or fish scaler. Probably would do both. It's got a lot of little tiny tools. And this one... It lives in my big bug out bag, like a lot of people call it. I'm never coming home bag. Well, I live as a neo nomad, so home is very different to me than most people. But it does live in my big bug out bag. If I was a long way away from any kind of infrastructure or permanent structure, it'd be nice to have a lot of these small tools that are on here. If I had to do it all over again, I'd probably get something different. The Leatherman Signal might be the way I'd go, but to be honest, I already bought it, and the big Victorinox knives are not cheap, so. I thought it was a decent place for it, and since I already had it, there you go. It does have perhaps the best metal file I've ever seen on a multi-tool. I really like that. And the aforementioned Victorinox Classic, that little teeny one. Again, a great starter place if you want to get into this. If you just want a little bit more utility in your pocket, or you want to give it to somebody that's not really a multi-tool kind of person. They're not going to carry one you know, on their belt in a pouch or something like that. You carry a knife, you carry a gun, and you just want a little bit more utility. You don't want to have to use your knife as a screwdriver. You want to have one. Also, I carried for a while. I don't anymore. Just I changed my carry style. But the Leatherman Micra. It's a Leatherman. It's good quality. It's very small for this same kind of format. You know, the folding around one central tool. My big issue with it is the big tool on there is the scissors. Now, if you use scissors a lot, you're cutting labels or something like that. Maybe that's what you want. But I would rather see it based around just a fold-out kind of big full-size blade, which you could easily put on a very small multi-tool like that. Kind of the same guys as you would see a butterfly knife where the handles fold out and there's a decent blade in there. I'd rather see that and have a little tiny pair of scissors on the side if you have to have them than have the whole thing based around a big pair of scissors. There are really small other ones like that that have pliers. I might see more utility in that. There's nothing wrong with those. My wife really likes hers and uses hers a lot. It's on her keychain still. And that's kind of part of her EDC. But the Leatherman Micra, it's a very cool, very small. For the size that it is, it's a ton of utility. If you wanted to step up a little bit in size and weight and still just have something to throw in your pocket, you might look at that Leatherman Micra. Leatherman does make one called a squirt based around a pair of pliers, but it's a little bit bigger. And you're getting into that thing where I don't know how convenient it'd be to carry in your pocket. Also, Gerber makes some very similar. And one I didn't touch on, SOG. SOG is kind of known for their multi-tools. But I have never owned an SOG multi-tool. I just haven't. SOG knives are really good. I've had nothing but good experiences with SOG knives. They make a good, affordable, utilitarian, marketplace kind of knife. That tactical, practical kind of knife. They make a lot of really good knives. I assume their multi-tools are good also, but I've never owned one in person. If you're looking, I would not discount them just because I've never used them. I would say that Leatherman has really good quality, but I would say the best value in multi-tools, in my opinion, is in Gerber. Gerber is probably the best value. Now, that's how I use them. I use them occasionally if I'm you know, managing a ranch or doing things like that. If I was every day hard using a multi-tool all the time, you might think that Leatherman is the best value because it's the best quality and you use it a lot. I don't use mine all the time. They're kind of a contingency plan for me. Anyway, I don't really want you to take away from this what model you should buy because what's best for me is not necessarily what's best for you. Think about what tools you want and how robust you want them to be and then pick a multi-tool based on that. And again, if you've been listening and you have adopted that bailout bag, baby bug out bag concept, you may really look at 
having a multi-tool in there, I think it makes a lot of sense if you're not going to carry one on your person. Anyway, that was actually, I just looked up, it's a fairly lengthy episode on multi-tools. I have a patron that I've been wanting to come on for a while because he has a lot more experience with multi-tools, I think, than I do. He's got a pretty manly job where he uses tools hard quite a bit, as in like vehicle salvaging, vehicle towing, like big commercial vehicles like tractor trailers. Maybe in the future he'll come in and share some of his wisdom with us on a part two. But I wanted to get this out. I've been thinking about it for a while, and I just did a pretty... As much as I really like a good knife and a really good firearm and part of EDC and rifles and shotguns and handguns, not everything is a tactical situation. Sometimes you just need to turn a screw or put up a piece of fence or cut a wire or pull out a splinter. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Alpha Male Podcast. If you do, I hope you'll consider supporting. I really do. Mostly because you believe in this content and you think that it's worth something and you want to contribute be a blessing to other men, step up and be an active member of the tribe instead of a passive listener. Also, patrons do get some cool insider content. If they choose to, they can be part of an insider chat where we talk about stuff all the time, guns, knives, believe in much more substantial stuff than that, but all kinds of stuff, iron sharpening iron. Also, I'm doing a series right now, or have been, Dry Fire with Melito. He's given some tips on stance, grip, things like that for shooting. Pictures, short videos, texts. If you want to become a patron, check out Patreon. There should be a link in the show notes. Most of that stuff is for patrons only, but some of that stuff I put out for the public. So you can go to the Patreon page, even if you're not a patron, and check out some of the stuff. And that should give you a little bit of a taste of what's on there and see if you don't think that is of some value. I don't take sponsors on this show, This show is mostly supported by the patrons. And on that note, I want to sincerely thank every patron that stepped up to support this podcast. It really does mean a lot. And if you want to check that out, Patreon link in the show notes, or you can go to goodshepherdtraining.com. Goodshepherdtraining.com. With that, the tactical tip of the day and the tactical verse of the day. Tactical tip of the day, talking about multi-tools and sometimes emergency vehicle repairs. Just had this issue come up. Dirty battery terminals. Cheap, easy way to clean battery terminals, baking soda and water. Baking soda is very basic as opposed to acidic. You can really clean off the terminals of your vehicle. Just mix baking soda and water, pour it on there, let it do its thing. It'll bubble up, fizz up, then clean it off with a good wire brush. Anyway, if you didn't know that, and a lot of you probably do, but if you didn't, it's a good practical tip on how to clean battery terminals. If they get so bad, sometimes the vehicle can have trouble starting. Anyway, it's a good thing to keep on top of if you open up your hood and you see that your battery terminals look white or fuzzy or all kind of green. You might want to give them a good cleaning. Baking soda and water are a good, cheap, easy way to clean. Tactical verse of the day. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What a great verse. Call sinners to repentance. And we are all sinners. We are called to turn from our sins and turn back to God. That's what repentance means. Change your mind. Change your ways. Turn from sin to God. Whatever situation, whatever your point in life, I don't know. But I know. But I know if you're looking for answers, the one who has them. God. Go to him. It's always the right answer to go to God. With that, thanks for listening, men. And have a blessed day.